Hello, hello, ASMR Nation. We are going to do a little DVD and a uh, book haul. And I have um, my special guest over there, Peps. Peps says hello. But before we get into, let me see what I have here. I have five DVDs and three books. We will do some channel maintenance, some channel hygiene. So if you're new here, welcome to my nonsense. If you're old here, welcome back. Oh, geez. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. And if you're old here, go double check. Make sure you're subscribed. Hit the like. If you like, leave a comment. It could be anything related to the video. It can just be a hello, a few emojis, whatever. As long as it's cool and respectful. Hit the notification bell. As always, I will link my tip jars down yonder in the description box. No pressure whatsoever. But that is what allows me to continue to make content. Also, you are invited to my Patreon. I know, not everybody can come, but you can't say you weren't invited. The link is down below, and I post a lot over there. So this is actually a little collective haul. A couple of the DVDs were from the library. If your library has a little sales area, they usually have DVDs for like a dollar and then sometimes it's like two for one, so it's 50 cents a DVD. And then um, one of them is from Goodwill. And then the books are all from Goodwill. We'll do the DVDs first because I snagged some of my favorite movies of all time. And one of them is A River Runs Through It. That is fly fishing. I have never been fly fishing. My dad's side were fishermen, but to my knowledge, they never got into fly fishing. Who knows though? I mean, I wasn't like this with my dad. Maybe he was. Um, they would go out on boats, so that's not really a fly fishing thing. This is a Robert Redford. Robert Redford has fashion to masterpiece. This one and Legends of the Fall. I still need to get my hands on a copy of Legends of the Fall. Are two of my favorite Brad Pitt movies and they're both like from my childhood. I watched them both when I was pretty young. Uh, this says Academy Award winner Robert Redford, Best Director, Ordinary People, blah blah blah. Captures the majesty of the Montana wilderness and the strength of the American family in this acclaimed adaptation of Norman McLean's classic memoir. So it was a book, a memoir. Craig Schaefer, or Sheffer, stars as the young Norman, and Brad Pitt stars as his brother Paul in an irresistible daredevil driven to challenge the world. Yeah, Brad Pitt's character is the loose cannon. Growing up, both boys rebel against their stern minister father while Norman channels his rebellion into writing. Paula descends down a slippery path to self-destruction, co-starring Tom Skerritt as the Reverend McLean and Emily Lloyd as the wild-hearted Jesse Burns. A River Runs Through is destined to become a classic. It is a knockout. I feel like this would be good to watch around now, like around fall. I think it's summery too. I can't remember. Very good movie. If you haven't seen it, try to. And it's slower and it's atmospheric, so just go that. Go in knowing it's a slower burn. But try not to multitask. Pay attention. This one I used to own. This one and the prestige. So like <laughs> I feel like my movies always have a, a a brother or sister that I like just as much. Um I actually think I like the prestige a little more than this one, but this is the illusionist. Paul Giamatti, Edward Norton, and Jessica Biel. Nothing is what it seems. So I still need to get my, and I used to have it. My ex stole all my movies. Um, well, he says he lost them, but I had tubs and tubs of movies that I, I, I have nightmares. Cause it was like, you know when you have a collection that means something to you and, and you just, so for a long time I wouldn't rebuy stuff because I was so, just so mad about it. So I'm starting this collection again. And what's nice is if you ever decide you don't want internet, you don't want, you know, we already did away with cable, but when you have a collection, you can just put your movies on 
I did it. I did it for two years. I didn't have any um, internet besides my phone. And that's when I built my first collection. Um, this is one of the year's best, a masterpiece. Unlock the mysteries of the year's most spellbinding film from the producers of Crash and Sideways. Oscar nominee Paul Giamatti and Edward Norton lead an all-star cast in this stunning film that conjures an exhilarating blend of suspense, romance, mind-bending, and mind-bending twists. The acclaimed illusionist Eisenheim Norton has not only captured the reimaginations of all of Vienna, but also the interest of the ambitious crown prince Leopold. But when Leopold's new fiance Jessica Biel rekindles a childhood fascination with Eisenheim, the prince's interest evolves into an obsession, and suddenly the city's chief inspector, Giamatti, finds himself investigating a shocking crime. But even as the inspector engages him in a dramatic challenge of wills, Eisenheim prepares for the most impressive illusion yet. This mesmerizing and beautifully acted film that teases you until the very end. So yes, it's about magic as is the prestige. But Paul Giamatti he just looks so young there, doesn't he? And we've talked about this one before. This is one of my all-time This is one of the few, even though I love horror, it rarely horrifies me, but this does. This is The Strangers with Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman. And I guess it's the unrated version, so there might be some extras that I haven't seen. Unbelievably scary. It is uh, loosely based on, I think, true events. Um, explore your worst fears imaginable with this shocking suspense thriller inspired by disturbing true events. After a 4 a.m. knock on the door and a haunting voice, Kristen McKay, Liv Tyler, and James Hoyt's Scott Speedman, remote getaway becomes a psychological night of terror as three masked strangers invade. Now they must go far beyond what they thought themselves capable if they hope to survive. Now they did do The Strangers Chapter 1, a movie that came out this summer that was pretty cheesy. Like, this is not cheesy. Maybe I'm biased because it's one of my, but it's not. It, and, and that's rare in a horror movie. And then I saw one on like another network, like HBO, that came out years ago that I didn't even hear about that was called The Strangers also, but this is the OG. As far as I know, this is the oest g of The Strangers. Is two movies included, so probably the regular, what came out, and then the unrated, I'm guessing. $14.99 from Borders, but I got it for like a dollar from the library, and it's still sealed and everything. This is not one of my favorite movies, but I still like it, and that is The Departed. The Departed. Young Leo. Damon. Uh, Jack. I always say Jack. Nicole, you know, that the one, the acting one, not Jack, <laughs> um, Nicholson, not the golfing one, the acting one, Martin Scorsese's best film since Goodfellas, now Goodfellas is one of my all-time favorites, but I would not say that Scorsese is one of my favorite directors, especially as of late, somebody asked me who my favorite director was, and I don't know, I really don't know because I feel like with all of them, I'm like, loved it, hated it, loved it, hated it. So I don't know, but this is The Departed. Rookie cop Billy Costigan, Leonardo DiCaprio grew up in crime that makes him the perfect mole. The man in, on the inside of the mob run by boss Frank Costello, Jack Nicholson. It's his job to win Costello's trust and help his detective handlers, Mark Wahlberg and Martin Sheen, bring Costello down. Meanwhile, SIU officer Colin Sullivan, Matt Damon, has everyone's trust. No one suspects he's Castillo's mole. How these covert lives, lives cross, double cross, and collide in this ferocious core of the widely acclaimed The Departed Martin Scorsese directs, guiding a cast for the ages in this visceral tale of crime and consequences. This is searing can't look away filmmaking, like staring into the eyes of a con or a cop. 
pretty sure most of you have seen this, but if not, give it a give it a whirl. The Departed. This is the wide screen edition. And one of my favorite books and movies. They did a great job with this one. Obviously, I think the book is better, but a slum dog millionaire. Slum dog millionaire. I think I read the book, um, God, when did I read this book? Did I read it? I think I read it before the movie came out. I probably read it right before the movie came out. Like, I heard about the movie and was like, no, you gotta read the book first. I'm guessing, but I don't know, it was a long time ago. Jamal Malik, played by Dave Patel, is just one question away from winning a fortune on India's version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? But how has this uneducated young man from the slum succeeded in providing correct responses to questions that have slumped countless scholars before him? And will he ultimately win it all or lose everything, including his true love? So he goes on a game show and they're just pretty much toying with even putting him on there because like he's, um, you know, where he's from is really big on classes. So they're like, okay, he's never going to win the money. We don't have to worry about it too much. But just coincidentally every question that gets asked brings up something from his past like it's just it's it's almost well it's freaking him out yeah and so every question like oh this is just this isn't any of them but it will do a flashback a question will pop up as he's trying to win this million dollars and you get to see the flashback of how he knows that answer and every question is like that until he gets like up and then the game show people are like, oh shit, he's gonna win this money. Read the book, but if you don't read books, go straight to the movie. It's excellent. And that is it for the movies. And then I got three books. Um, this one I had to read by, I, um, I read it from the library a while back. And it's one of my favorite parenting books. It's called Hunt, Gather, Parent. So I want to do a reread of it eventually. Uh, this book, How to Raise an Adult, Let Them Be Kids. I want to read Gabor Mate or Mate's. Hold on to your kids. I feel like that one's going to be a really good good one. But this one, of the ones I've read, this one, um, How to Be a Parent or How to Raise an Adult, and. Let Them Be Kids might be my top that I've read so far, parenting books. I need to gather them up and do a video. Nobody really watches my book videos. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'll just put it on Patreon, but Hunt, Gather, Parent. This is like kind of a textured cover. Uh, when Dr. Micheline Duclef visits a Mayan village in the Yucatan Peninsula, she encounters moms and dads whose parent parent a totally different way and raise extraordinarily kind, generous, and helpful children without yelling, nagging, or issuing timeouts. This is so different. <laughs> no matter how many books I read, I still yell. <laughs> I try not to. I get better every year. Um... Duclef sets out to find out with her own three-year-old daughter in tow, learning parenting strategies from families from three of the world's most venerable communities, Mayan families in Mexico, Inuit families in the Arctic Circle, and Hadzabi families in Tanzania. Without resorting to bribes or chore charts, Maya parents, uh, Mayan, Maya parents rear loyal helpers by including kids in household tasks from the time they can walk. When kids act out, Inuit parents respond with a gentle demeanor that teaches children how to settle themselves down and think before acting. And Hadzabi parents raise confident, self-driven kids with a simple tool that protects children from stress and anxiety. Not only does Duclef live with families and observe their techniques firsthand, she also applies them with her own daughter to striking effect. Filled with practical takeaways, Hunt Together Parent reveals a universal parenting paradigm adapted for American families. Let me tell you my biggest, I need to reread it, 
but my biggest takeaway from this book is that it is okay to scare my kids. <laughs> um, a lot of these cultures have boogeymans and to keep the kids safe. So you'll be like, you know, we don't, we don't venture out at night by ourselves because the boogeyman is out at night or the boogeyman lives near that water and that's why we don't go out to the water by ourselves or something like that. So, um, it explains it and articulates it way better than I can, but we, we do use boogeymen to keep our kids away from dangerous things in this house. And then uh, another parenting book, Unselfie. Why Empathetic Kids Succeed in Our All About Me World. And I have a very sensitive toddler. I have, I have sensitive, I'm sensitive. I'm highly sensitive, um, which is, if you, if you're constantly highly sensitive, you're, you probably, you might be, <laughs> you might be, um, some other things too. You might be, uh, a little, you could, you could, you might be somewhere in the ADHD ought spectrum somewhere. And I pass that down to my kids. Now I kind of wonder, like, genetically, are these other cultures wired the same way? I wonder. I wonder. But it's not just nature. It's also nurture. And it's also our culture that kids in this country are absolutely suffering from a lot of uh, mental afflictions, right? Compared to other countries, compared to other cultures. Um, the essential blueprint to help parents and educators shift our children's focus from I, me, to us, we, and ours. And we are, uh, in this country, we have been on this rugged individualism path for far too long. Teens today are 40% less empathetic than they were 30 years ago, often with devastating consequences. An unselfie best-selling author and parenting expert Dr. Michelle Borba pinpoints the forces causing the empathy crisis and offers a revoluntary nine-step plan to help parents and educators cultivate empathy in children from birth to young adulthood, including why spanking, yelling, and timeouts can squelch empathy, how lavish praise keeps kids locked in selfie mode. Yes, um, I was just learning about this on the Huberman, Huberman channel how you shouldn't praise like oh you're so smart because then they don't want to attempt things that they don't feel smart at so instead you'd be like I love how you worked through that I love how you problem solve I admire and am proud of how you figure it out one of the things I constantly say this time around as I've learned a lot of hard lessons as a parent is it's okay you'll figure it out or we'll figure it out or we'll do things one one thing at a time stuff like that why reading makes kids smarter and kinder. How to help kids be upstanders in the face of bullying. Why self-control is the best predictor of wealth, health, and happiness. And how to ignite a kindness revolution in your kids and community. With age-appropriate exercises and examples of, from years of research, Dr. Borba offers a framework that yields results we all want successful, happy kids who grow up to be kind, moral, courageous, and resilient adults. So that is unselfie. This thought-provoking and practical book may very well tip over the parenting priority apple cart, and rightly so. And then the last one is Leaving Church. Leaving Church, this is by Barbara Brown Taylor. A memoir of faith wonderfully crafted, a love story about letting go and learning to live with the mystery of what happens next. Um, after nine years serving on the staff of a big urban church in Atlanta, Barbara Brown Taylor arrives in rural Clarksville, Georgia, population 1,500 following her dream to become pastor of her own small congregation. At 
after five successful years, she finds herself experiencing compassion fatigue and wonders what exactly God has called her to do. She realizes that in order to keep her faith, she may have to leave. I feel better about my faith. Sorry, I had one light. There we go. I feel better about my faith going not going to a church that I don't feel connected to than I do going and I've been through I've been to some churches that I'm like that no no and I I do there's one that I really miss and it was a small church uh, it's just way too far I, I would never make it but Taylor describes a rich spiritual journey in which God has given her more questions than answers. As she becomes part of the flock instead of the shepherd, she describes her poignant and sincere struggle to regain her footing in the world without her defining collar. Taylor's realization that this may in fact be God's surprising path for her leads her to a refreshing search for God's to find God in new places. Leaving church will remind even the most skeptical among us that life is about both disappointment and hope and ultimately renewal. Sorry the lighting, um, whenever I wear a hat, I don't know if the light, like my iPad tracks my eyeballs or why, but like when I go like this, it kind of messes, I don't know, I don't know what that's all about. Let's just sabotage. So yeah, that is the five movies and three books that I, got, I guess like over the last week or so. If you watched this all the way to the end, thank you very much. I hope that you have a good rest of your day.